Hey guys, it's Bina, and in today's video, I want to go over the Druid Boulder build guide for Diablo 4. Uh, finally, it's out on Max Roll. Uh, everything's there. There's some gameplay video. Let's first look at how this build actually plays. Um, so as you can see here, you cast your Hurricane with Dolman Stone. You'll, ca you'll have some boulders rotating around you instead of throwing boulders in front of you. So that makes for a playstyle kind of like Diablo 2's Hammered In, where... You cast your boulders and they rotate around you and you just move around to kill stuff around, right? Uh, it's extremely good for, like, general gameplay. It does tier 100s very well. It does speed farming very well. It does uber Lilith and all the bosses, Durial farming. It does all of that, all of those things very, very well. Um, the one thing it's bad at is dealing with suppressor affixes. So suppressor affixes have a bubble around them that blocks projectiles, right? Well, with Boulder, you need to be always inside of that um, inside of that dome to be able to uh, hit the enemy because if you ever go out, all of your Boulders instantly disappear. You lose all of your spirit generation, you lose all of your damage. And then if you go, if you spam Boulders outside of the bubble and you go in, you lose your Boulders as well, right? So um, that is like the most... Annoying thing about the build is dealing with suppressor affixes, but other than that, the build really does fine in every single aspect of the game. So, there's a video here, you can watch that if you want. Uh, basically, it's um, it's based around the Dolman Stone amulet. You need Dolman Stone, you need Symbiotic Aspect. So when the Nature's Fury uh, triggers a free skill, your ultimate cooldowns, uh, your non-ultimate cooldowns of the opposite type are reduced by 5 seconds, right, with a perfect roll. You want to get... Um, Hurricane's cooldown low enough to be able to have permanent uptime on it on one single proc of symbiotic aspect. The main reason is so that when you're unlucky and you don't get two procs off of like your um your hurricane, then you still have permanent uptime and you don't lose your boulder uh in between, you know, moving around and stuff like that. So it just feels much smoother. It's not required to um play the build, but it is making it much, much more smoother. Right, and the other very important part is aspect of metamorphic stone. Um, this one changes your boulder to a core skill, so it loses the rat tag, it gains a core tag, and you can now spam it for 50, uh, 50 spirit. Right, uh, so you need all these three parts to make the build work at first, this version of the build, and then you're good to go. Um, so yeah, it revolves around the symbiotic aspect and nature's fury, getting one. Um, one proc to reset the cooldown of your hurricane and then spamming your boulders so that they rotate around you all the time. Then you move around with trample. Blood Howl is there to give you attack speed and also um it's a nice uh it's a nice source of healing. Petrify gives you a great damage boost against like priority targets since it gives you uh a multiplicative bonus to your critical strike damage. Also very good defensively because if you're ever in a need, so for example, I talked about those uh very hard to deal with suppressor elites, right? Well, if you encounter a suppressor, you can just petrify him and, um, you know, you have some time to deal with him before he is um, <laughs> not, he is knocked back all around the place because, yes, I forgot to say, uh, these boulders, they knock back constantly, right? It's very, very nice to get resource back with Umbral, but it's also very annoying with suppressor because it will knock back the suppressor. You have to, like, predict where he will move move with his knockbacks. If not, you'll get out of the bubble. You'll lose all of your boulders. You need to go back in, spam your boulders again. And yeah, this, this is why Suppressor is mainly um, very hard to deal with. Anyways, it's not impossible to deal with. If you're tanky enough, you'll just stand there and you won't even care. But until you are tanky enough, this is going to be what is the most um, frustrating to deal with. So the way I built this build is uh, with Tempest Roar. Tempest Roar gives you access to damage versus poison enemies and damage uh, reduction from poison enemies, which is really great to get, for example, on your chest piece, on your pants, on your totem. Like there are a lot of places where um, there's also on your Paragon board where you can get some nodes from damage reduction from poison enemies. So this is why Tempest War uh, is necessary for the build to make it as tanky as possible. This is the main reason why we use it. You can play this without it. You can play this with Vasilis if you want. It's just a worse version of the build, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, we go for Disobedience here. We go for like damage reduction on pants and chest. On the pants, you actually want to go for ranks of boulder. 
to get a little bit more damage out of it. On your gloves, we go for crit storm skill cooldown reduction. So as we talked about a little bit earlier, you want to get access to like only one proc of symbiotic aspect um, to gain permanent uptime on Hurricane. You need to get this down to at least 13 seconds cooldown. How do you do this? The main way is going to be trying to get a really well rolled Dolmen Stone with Nature Magic Skill cooldown reduction and then rolling with Storm Skill cooldown reduction on your gloves. This will enable you to get access to uh, permanent uptime on Hurricane after only one proc. If you're having problems, you can still roll cooldown on your totem, and that would make it even easier to gain uh, permanent uptime on Hurricane. On your weapon, uh, weapon, totem, and one of your gloves, you want to get Natural Balance, you want to get Retaliation, and Metamorphic Stone. On your gloves, you go for Symbiotic Aspect. On the boots, decided to go for Ghost Walker to gain 25% movement speed after being unstoppable and having phasing through the monsters. And then you want to go for a really nice Umbral this makes it so that you have absolutely no resource problems. Like the, the only time where you will um, feel like you're, need, you're ever in need of resources against a boss, but that's why we roll resource generation on both of our rings. Man, that makes it much easier to gain some resources with wind shear. Uh, against bosses, you will just weave in wind shear and boulder uh, one after the other, and you should be good on resource there. Um, also, trample gives you a nice little burst of resource here with 40 spirit on cast. So that is a very nice, um, you know, little burst of damage against bosses here. So that is pretty much the overview of like what we're using here. Of course, our boons, wariness, it's kind of like the go must go to for any druid. Uh, swooping attack and sight talon, they increase our damage. You go for bolster because there's not really any other good choice that we can really take here. Um, arguably calamity, extended duration of ultimate skills. If you want to get a little bit more uh, duration out of your petrify uh, damage bonus. You can do that. Energize if you want to get a little bit of spirit, but like Boulder has a really, really low look at hit chance with 4%. So that is not exactly what is going to change the uh, the way the build plays, especially against bosses, because against density, like I said, we have Umbral and we don't really need any sort any sort of resource gen there. Bolster is like the go-to there. And then Obsidian Slam for just a little bit more damage. You could go for Calm Before the Storm uh, if you want to get a little bit more refreshes of petrify but like as i said with the very low lucky hit chance here and with us not scaling lucky hit chance anywhere on our gear uh i think obsidian slam is fine to give us a little bit more damage uh, every 20 kill so great tankiness no resource problems not reliant on lucky hits and it has a strong single target damage like i said this deals with all the bosses in the game very very well uh the drawbacks here constant knockbacks so you're constantly knocking back enemies and you have to move with them, especially with suppressor elites. That's why I said weak to certain elites here. Requires good positioning and requires the unique amulets and aspect. For our vampiric powers, we go with metamorphosis. This is your main way of becoming unstoppable and also applying vampiric curse. The vampiric curse will always apply vulnerable, right? So that gives you permanent uptime on vulnerable and you deal multiplicative 16% increased damage to those enemies. Very, very useful against bosses. So those two work very well together. Ravenous increases our movement speed uh, and increases our attack speed based on our movement speed. This is one of the strongest power in Season 2, uh, which en enables us to reach very, very high amounts of attack speed. Then we have Undying, which is your main way of healing. So for every single cast of any ability, you'll gain 3% of your life and double this below 50% life. Uh, and finally, Moonrise, which gives us a movement speed bonus and attack speed bonus. So uh, this is pretty good because compared to other Druid builds, um, we are not able to reach movement speed cap. We're not, you know, turning into uh, a dire werewolf or something like that. So getting that extra movement speed is pretty nice. And also getting up to 20% attack speed is also really cool. So that is why we're going with this. Other options you could use Sanguine Brace, Domination, Resilience. Uh, basically what, what you really want, but um, those are the ones that felt the better for me for just general gameplay. Then if we talk about the skills, as always, Boulder is your main skill, uh, is your main way of dealing damage. Uh, Hurricane it makes your Boulder rotate around the Vortex, and it also gives you Spirit. So you have the Slow from Hurricane, you got the Knockback from the Boulder, you've got the Petrify Stun, you have many, many ways to gain Spirit with your Aspect of the Umbral. Wind Shear is your Spirit Generation, gives you Moving Speed, Vulnerable, Damage Reduction when using Might as well. Um, it also activates your powers like Moonrise very, very easily. 
Petrify is both your defensive and offensive option. Use this against bosses to gain more damage uh, with a critical strike damage multiplier. Blood Howl gives us attack speed and is also is a good heal. Um, and then Trample also gives you spirit and it's your movement ability. Uh, Nature's Fury is a key passive here. This is a, enabling the symbiotic aspect. So when this triggers a free skill, you will have a five second reset of the cooldown of Hurricane. Enabling you to get permanent uptime on Hurricane. And Tempest Roar here gives us access also to End Venom. End Venom, even though it says 30% uh, additive bonus crit damage, it's actually multiplicative. So this is a very, very strong um, passive to get on your skill tree. So here we have our Paragon boards. So um, you start with just your first board, right? Exploit. If you use this little slider here, it will tell you exactly the progression that you need to do. Uh, and then at the complete end, you see the level 100 respec, which is just a more efficient way to build your board. So we start out with exploit, getting that vulnerable out uh, as soon as you hit a monster is very nice. Then we go to Earth and Sky. Um, Earth and Sky grants a bonus to all magic nodes within the range. So that gives us a lot more damage reduction from poison enemies. And then we grab heightened malice here. Keep in mind, if you don't have Tempest Roar, consider using Poison Creeper instead of Blood Howl and take the Pack Leader Spirit Boon just so that you get access to this still, right? And you don't actually gain absolutely no benefit from heightened malice or um, or these po damage reduction for poison enemies. If you don't have Tempest Roar and you don't want to use Poison Creeper, you can skip heightened malice, uh, heightened malice board entirely and then come back to it once you have it at level 100, right? Um, our third board is Inner Beast. Inner Beast reduces your spirit cost up to 30%. This is really, really easy to keep up all of the time because you just weave in wind shear uh, every so often. So at least once every four seconds to keep um, all of your buffs up. So this is why we, we take this one, Inner Beast. Uh, on this one, we have Undaunted. So damage reduction, uh, the more Fortify you have, always nice. Earth and Devastation, we grab some of the all res here. Um, we grab some damage there and we go for alt match. Outmatch gives us bonus to all uh, rare nodes within this one. So it's pretty nice for to get some all res there and to get some crit damage with earth skills and with power. Uh, so these are pretty powerful. Also, Earth and Devastation. This is the main reason why we scale damage versus crowd control on our rings and on our weapon to get this bonus as high as possible. And then we go for Constricting Tendrils. Constricting Tendrils, we go for Spirit. Uh, spirit, for every five decks, you get crit damage. And then the crit damage um, is also increased for every crit that you do on the target up to 12%. So it's pretty nice. You get some bonuses here. You're not able to get all of the bonuses, but it, this is still fine. Uh, we get some of the life nodes here and there, right? And then we go for Ancestral Guidance. Ancestral Guidance, after spending 75 spirit, you deal 30% increased damage for 5 seconds. You actually don't need Reclamation or any of the spirit on kill nodes at the end because... If you have a good umbral, you'll just be full resource all the time uh, while clearing. So that's it for this Paragon board. I actually have another board later, uh, later down in the endgame variants for a tankier version of this. Uh, but we'll get to this pretty soon. Uh, so here you can see just about like how the gameplay, um, how the gameplay is, right? Uh, you can also use the Bolt's Will in a speedrunning variant, uh, which is pretty nice to get some extra damage and some extra resources. So... You can read all of this. Uh, cooldown and resource management, basically what is important, what is not important. Resor resources are really easy, as I said, with Umbral. Cooldown reduction, you want to get your Hurricane down to like permanent uptime with only one uh, activation of Symbiotic Aspect. Um, and then you have like your progression that you want to do, the um, aspects that you want to get in a certain order. And then we're here with the first early endgame planner. Uh, you got the progression here. You can read through it. At the end, you're going to get Tempest Roar and you get synergies from Poison Enemies, which brings this build to its full potential. So mainly and Venom and like um, also access to um, damage reduction from Poison Enemies. So those are the main things about this one. You get like um, the skill trees, the different skill trees here. Tells you exactly what to take. So that's That should be pretty straightforward. All the damage scaling, all of the defense scalings here, if you want to read through it. Um... What you want to socket, elixirs and senses that you can use, all of the stats priority for your weapons and offhands and armors and whatnot, right? So all of your gear priority. Um, keep in mind, if you need more cooldown to get uh, down to uh, only one proc of symbiotic, 
you can roll cooldown reduction on your um on your totem and this will make it much make it much easier to reach the uh 13 second minimum that you need you've got some hardcore adjustments here mainly like more being more tanky is what you want to be uh speed farming variation so we've got three variations for you guys here speed farming nightmare dungeon push nightmare dungeon push actually just goes more tanky and you use a nightmare dungeon push board which tries to grab as much life and armor as possible on the paragon board so in my testing this was about 28 percent more ehp compared to um the regular board and the regular version just to like farm anything so keep in mind if you want to if you really enjoy uh being tanky you can swap to this board and uh damage is still very good it's just that it's a little bit less damage and way more tankier and then we have the pinnacle boss here if you want to go fight uber lilith these are the changes that you can do and then you have a little showcase video here showcasing how we can deal with uber lilith and it's actually pretty easy as you can see it deals a ton of damage and it deals with uber lilith just fine skips all the phases uh in part two you, do, you won't ever get um fireballs running at you if you have enough damage so it makes this fight really 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 easy um why don't you use vasili's prayer so i talked about this a little bit earlier in the video you can use vasili's it just builds a little bit differently it uses a different paragon board to get access to uh, another multiplier on your paragon board for uh wearer builds but mainly it's because it's way more defenses to go with tempest roar and getting access to damage reduction from poison enemies all the time because you'll just poison enemies passively with your proc skills from um, Nature's Fury and also Hurricane and Wind Shear. So it's very, very easy to be super tanky. And then how can you farm Tempest Roar, Dolmen Stone? Uh, so the Dolmen Stones, you, the boulders actually rotate eight times around you. So that makes it as you can get like a lot of boulders rotating around you and destroying monsters super easily. Um, aspect of the Umbral, keep in mind, uh, Applying CC to an already CC'd monsters won't give you resource back, but since knockbacks are so short, uh, you get a ton of resource anyways. So that pretty much covers the entire build, guys. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have some fun with the boulder build in Diablo 4 in Season 2. And uh, I wish that Blizz Blizzard made more items, more uniques, that change the way a skill works, just like Dolman Stone. Because, so this is one of the most interesting uniques in my opinion in the game because it completely changes the way the skill works right um anyways with that said i hope you enjoy the build guys i hope you enjoy running around sanctuary killing enemies with your big rocks and i'll see you guys in the next video